These are giant Lego dominoes, and this is a domino machine made entirely from Lego. It knocks over dominoes and sets them up again in an infinite loop. Everyone loves seeing dominoes fall, but why would I waste time setting them up when I could just build a machine to do it for me? I shouldn't even have to touch dominoes anymore. This machine had so many issues. No, oh, what are you doing? Why? The problem is that when dominoes fall, they are randomly angled and unevenly spaced. If you were to lift the dominoes up exactly where they landed, they would also be slightly misaligned. This error is compounded each time the dominoes are pushed down, so that you quickly create a scattering of dominoes that fails to work after just a few resets. This is a really tricky problem to try to solve. I can't even begin working on a mechanism to push the dominoes up unless I figure out how to not make them scatter. The solution to this problem comes from something you wouldn't think is Lego, but actually is. Magnets. Lego magnets. It may seem wild, but in 1980, Lego released a line of trains that used magnets to keep the cars together. And here are a couple dozen of them. That's convenient. After a bit of testing, I was able to securely mount them into the bottom of these panel pieces. One of them is clear so you can see inside. I then build a domino around it, attaching tiles on the top to make it smooth. Oops, treasure map. There are two magnets in my oversized domino and two magnets in the floor. I'm sure you guys all remember how magnetic force is inversely related to distance as stated in Coulomb's law of electromagnetics. No, just me? Okay. Well, I eventually came up with this, which has the distance between the magnets equal to only one Lego tile, which I'm really happy about. Amazingly, these super-powered magnet dominoes solve both of our problems. If we scoot the domino away from where it should be, the magnets pull it back in. And if we twist the domino, the magnets realign it. Even though these dominoes are way bigger than what you usually think of as a domino, I'm okay with their size because I have good memories of playing with large wooden dominoes as a kid. It's great to see these magnets working, but there's still so much left to build. Let's get started on the actual machine. My plan is to make a mechanism to lift up the dominoes that hides underneath the magnets. I also want to add some doors to both hide the mechanism and to make a solid floor for the dominoes to fall on. Looks like nine studs apart is the correct distance for optimal domino sounds. This leaves us with just a few studs as our target area for pushing, which is the part here on the top half of the domino, below where it lands on the next domino. With a bit of testing, I determined that this was the motion that I needed to replicate. And then I got to work. This seems correct. Ah, I think we need something taller. Is it just me or do these pieces look like eggs? Comment below if you like eggs. Even if this worked, it's way too hard to turn. Back to the drawing board. Now that is really smooth. This is essentially a scissor lift, but with a couple of pieces attached in weird ways. I built another copy of the machine so I could more easily attach a motor to it. I need to give a shout out to these Technic frames. They make building sturdy gearboxes so much easier. Looks good. All right, here goes nothing. Well, at least we know it has enough power. It does work occasionally though. Let's test it a bit more. This is a temporary pushing down mechanism that helps me test the lift arm design without any interference. It looks great most of the time, but occasionally the magnets betray us. You can see the exact moment of the betrayal here. To show you what is happening, imagine this as the domino. The magnets will pull the domino back to the center from both sides, and the lift arm pushes near the top right of the domino. Individually, none of these make the domino fall, but when the lift arm is pushing and the magnets pull here, it causes the domino to rotate and fall over. To fix this on my machine, I'm going to add a wall stopping the domino from going to the left so that it never needs to be pushed back in. This is gonna be really tricky, but I have an idea about how to do it. In order to test my idea though, I'm gonna need these doors working. So let's start prototyping that. I've been eyeing using this mechanism to toggle my doors open and closed. Instead of a spring though, I want to use a Lego rubber band. Nope, nope, nope. Ah, let's use this one. Here's the mechanism, and here's the door, which toggles from open to closed. Adding another lift arm so I can have a second door was pretty easy too. 
Success. The doors work, or so I thought. This is basically the combo of the two mechanisms together. So eventually these doors are gonna be above this. Um, what you see happens here as you spin this, doors open. This goes up, awesome. And then the doors close. Well, this is still up. I spent over a week trying to get the lift arm to go down sooner. I had this really cool idea to use springs without the spring in them, but that idea also failed. It is unforeseen problems like these that makes integration take so long. I sadly decided to abandon the mechanical toggle for the doors and instead use a cam to give me more control. I'm definitely going to use this toggle in a future project though. Speaking of, if you're interested in keeping up with what I'm building, you can join my channel to see some cool, semi-regular work in progress updates. For now though, I need to figure out how to make multiple dominoes be powered by a single motor. Moving the motor between the gears helps, but this is still way too springy. There is so much force here that this gear snapped. I think I found our springy culprit. Turns out that Lego axles can store lots of energy when twisted. The tension buildup in the axles is what causes the dominoes to launch. In place of these pesky axles, I'm going to use gears instead. Lego gears aren't perfect though. Look at how I can spin one end of this while the other end stays still. Despite this, gears are much better at transferring power without twisting when compared to axles. It took me half a dozen tries to figure out the right combo of gears, but look at that, no more springiness. After about a month working on this project, I was actually starting to think I would complete it. <laughs> baby! To attach the doors, we need to mount this on the gears. We sadly won't be using eggs anymore. I'm amazed at how close these gears get to each other without touching. Because I want doors on both sides of the lift arm, I'm gonna use one of our twisty little friends to power another door over here. These doors work by having one gear control when the door opens and one control when it closes. The hardest part is syncing them up. After some adjustments, the door is now open so that they never hit the lift arm. Remember how those magnets betrayed us earlier? It is time to make betrayal illegal. This newly mounted axle is the perfect mounting point for the backstop. I also attached it to the lift arm so they stay perfectly in sync. I often lose parts down in the catacombs of my builds. I recommend having a pair of tweezers on hand to grab things that your stubby fingers can't. It was pure luck that this doesn't jam the entire machine, but instead precisely weaves between the lift arms. This stops the magnet betrayal by clamping the domino on both sides, but they're still looking a bit top heavy. I used my food scale to figure out that not all Lego pieces weigh the same. I was using two of these tall bricks, but they have the same shape as five of these square ones. And surprisingly, the square bricks are much lighter. I also gave these magnet criminals a third magnet friend. A trio of magnets should pull the domino more than just two. After working on this for so long, I discovered that I can now feel if the machine has enough power to lift a domino without using a domino. I think I need help. Let's try scaling things up and run two motors powering four dominoes. Oh, please work. What? What? No, what are you doing? Not to worry, looks like I just forgot to secure these gearboxes. Okay, okay, let's try it again, let's try it again now that it's not jammed. One, two, three, four! Ah! Let's go! I think we're on the right track. Let's add another motor. Yo, that sounds awesome. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Oh, look at this one. So this one kind of fell far away. Let's see what it does. Magnet back in, magnets, let's go! Back into where it needs to be. Magnets are so dope. Oh, oh, okay, too fast, too fast, too fast. We're gonna be quiet now and stop yelling at the camera. Well, I see that as an absolute win, but let's keep going and clean up this mess that has been stealthily accumulating on my table. We can't forget about knocking the dominoes down. Let's build something to do it for me. This may look very complicated, but it is just a modified version of the lift arm that pushes dominoes down instead of up. Now the machine loops completely by itself. I also built these letters. After all, it wouldn't be a domino machine if it didn't say domino on the side. I then waited a week for parts to arrive. I needed some more gears, Technic pieces, and another motor so I could finish the final machine. It was easier for me to restart from scratch while using the prototype as a reference. I decided to make the casing for the machine out of light gray because, well, yeah. Building this only took me a couple of days because I had the prototype design finished. It honestly felt like I was building a very large, repetitive Lego set. Now just a few final details. I am so happy to see this finally working. 
It is so satisfying to see the limits of LEGO being pushed this far. This machine sets up 10 dominoes every seven seconds. That is equivalent to 120,000 dominoes a day, which, by the way, is a new world record. The power of LEGO is truly unlimited. And finally, after all that work, I can do nothing and just watch my machine run. I can honestly say that I did not intend to break a world record when I started making this. The previous world record was set by NASA engineer and YouTuber Mark Rober. His machine sets up only 100,000 dominoes a day, which falls 20,000 short of my LEGO machine. Sadly, you need two witnesses present at a world record attempt, and because I don't have any friends, I'll let Mark keep his record for now. The crazy thing is that my design is infinitely scalable, so all I would need to do is extend the machine to double or triple the record. That's great, but what can't this thing do? If you push the dominoes backwards, it kind of breaks everything. Removing a domino from the middle isn't great either. It can lift up the dominoes if you manually push a few down though. For now, this machine only exists in a straight line, but I have plans for a version 2 that would allow you to create curved lines. I want to use this to make a giant loop of dominoes that never stops falling, making it truly infinite. Now you may be wondering, how many pieces are in it? Around 4,000, give or take a couple hundred. Or how long did it take? About three to 400 hours on weeknights and weekends over the last three months. How much does it cost? No idea. Comment below how much you think a custom made, world record breaking Lego domino machine is worth. Instructions? Coming soon to a description near you. Who is sponsoring this video? Oh, thanks for asking. The sponsor is brilliant.org. Brilliant is the best tool for learning math, science, and engineering. I love Brilliant because they take what I hate about learning and get rid of it. Everything is interactive. That's kind of cool. I studied engineering at university, but I focused on electronics and programming. Brilliant has helped me better understand mechanical design without having to take another college class. Brilliant has courses for everyone from programming Python, solar power, or all of math. Just a few minutes a day can really level up your brain and your career. Brilliant's courses are split up into bite-sized chunks, which is such a nice way of learning a new skill. Brilliant is free to join at brilliant.org slash Grant Davis. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's premium membership. Thank you to Brilliant for helping me make the best Lego videos I can. Please consider checking them out. And if you want to see more from me, subscribe.